Hi, this is Catherine. This is Taking Tea with Catherine. This is Harvest Blend Herbal Tea from Trader Joe's, which tastes and smells exactly how you imagine autumn to taste and smell. Heavy on the cinnamon, apple, that sort of thing. Oh, I absolutely love it. Um, and I'm using this purple mug today. It's one of the two lines of, uh, from this line of, I don't know, reading, you know, cute little flowery stuff mugs that I have. They had bags that went with it too, but I, I don't think I use them anymore. Anyway, um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I was thinking, uh, for some reason it's a nice mug. That's all. That's all. It's, purple is my second favorite color, though I do tend to wear a lot of purple. Um, I had someone stop me on the street. Uh, I was on my way to work, so I didn't really have time to talk and I probably wouldn't have wanted to talk anyway, because they were either trying to raise money or something or do a survey, which, you know, I just wasn't in the mood for and so he's try he tries to get my attention by saying hey is purple your favorite color and I was like no <laughs> no wait no because I was wearing my mask <laughs> I was fully covered uh, trying to be a good example but anyway um yeah so I didn't have time to talk to him but apparently I have time to go to book off which I do more than I should probably but I did go like almost a solid month I think maybe more than a month actually without going there recently. Not to mention the whole hiatus between March and July. But anyway, um, so I guess I'm making up for lost time. So yeah, in recent months I have hit book off more than once and uh, you've seen some of my hauls, uh, but I have some more. And uh, of course that's not my only hauls in life, but I thought I'd just stick to the book off hauls for now. And I thought I'd divide them. So today I'm gonna do nonfiction. Another day I'll do fiction and then maybe I'll do I'll divide the fiction off from the mystery books. So maybe do a tea mystery haul. I don't know. But anyway, that almost implies that I would also have to do a tea haul, which I have no problem doing, but I have no more space for my tea. Anyway, what does that stop me? But uh, I thought today we'll start with nonfiction. I don't know, nonfiction's November's coming up soon. I mean, I'm deep into October right now reading my Victorian novels, but um, you know, never hurts to have some more ideas. Although I think I already have my TBR for November. Things change. But anyway, so let's get started. I'll show you all these books. Most of them were a dollar. And oh, that's my cat, Janie. She's uh, back in her vocal phase again, which is way too often. And um, I think she was trying to remind me that uh, not all of you know about Book Off and what it is. It is a bookshop that is a kind of a chain. They're, um, I think they are in Japan. I think that's where they started, but they have a number of uh, stores in I think Hawaii and California, maybe elsewhere. I can't remember, but also New York City, but only one location in New York City and that's fine. But um, not that I wouldn't like another one right in my neighborhood, but I'm pretty happy where it is. And it's called Book Off because I don't know why it's called Book Off. I'm assuming because the price has been chopped off a little bit or a lot sometimes, but it's not just a bookshop. They sell all kinds of things. You can sell your things there too. There's a lot of electronics, um, DVDs, toys. I don't know. I don't usually hit those parts of the store because I'm more interested in the books, but, uh, but it exists. But the second floor, uh, has a big section of fiction and nonfiction, and there's certain areas that are just one dollar and a good amount of one dollar fiction books and there's a big section of one dollar nonfiction books and then um then there's the other parts of the, the the store that have um i wouldn't call it full price because none of the books are full price but the less discounted books so it ranges from around five dollars to twenty dollars and change so yeah, so you, I, I tend to try not to buy too many of those, but once in a while I will fall prey and buy one. Um, just the other day, and I know we're doing nonfiction, but there was a historical novel from Sharon K. Penman that came out not too long ago. And in, you know, Barnes and Noble, it was close to $30. And I saw it a book off for like fifteen fifty, and I carried it around with me. I was gonna buy it cause I really wanted it. But I was like, am I really gonna read it anytime soon? I, mean, I could, but I don't have an actual schedule of when I'm going to read it. So like, why, why would I buy it for that much when either I can always take it out of the library because I'm not doing the author any favors by buying it discounted, I don't think. Um, or I can wait and if it's still there in a while, they may put the price down. I don't mind 
spending five dollars seven fifty, but or even ten maybe. But I just, yeah, I'm just trying to not always. When I buy books a little more than I'd like to pay for them, I want to support a bookshop. But I'm already supporting Book Off anyway. So with that being said, most of these books are one dollar, and I'm very happy about that. So, um. We'll start with a book that well, it has a little stain in the front, but again, it's not that big. You can't really see it. Yes, Janie. Um, um, it's called The Year of Reading Proust, a memoir in real time by Phyllis Rose, which this is the first of two books that are by people who I have books of that I haven't read yet, that I've had for a while. So now I think I want to read all of their books because it sounds good. They, uh, Phyllis Rose wrote, um, Parallel Lives, which I showed one time here, um, about five Victorian marriages. I mean, that would be a great thing to read right now, actually. But this is about reading Proust. So um, I totally intended this year to be my year of reading Proust. Not only, but, you know, to at least start. Because I did start, I think, was it Swan's Way, the first book of, of his, you know, In Search of Lost Time series. And I started, yeah, I started probably around 2002, 2003, 2004, I can't remember, but I stopped. And I have, like, I have the books. I have two versions of it, I think. So I just, yeah, I think maybe it might be nice to read a memoir. So this is not in perfect condition, but it's not too beat up. Anyway, so it could be good if I'm reading Proust to read that as well. It could happen. Maybe next year will be my, re my year of reading Proust. I can't say it. Anyway. Yeah, I really didn't do very well with a lot of my goals, but who did? Who did this year? So this is also um, a writer that I have a book that I need to read called A Distant Mirror. I keep seeing it everywhere, but I, I also got that one discounted. But this is um, Barbara W. Tuckman, I think. The Proud Tower, A Portrait of the World Before the War, 1890 to 1914. So that's kind of cool because it's like late Victorian period and Edwardian period, basically. Um, so that could be, that could be really good. Um, and it's not just about one, one area. I think it's also, you know, a little bit about Europe, America, etc. So I like history and there's pictures. There's pictures. Look at that. Um, I always like when there's pictures. This is kind of a beard over here. Uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Who does he think he is? I guess I'll find out. Anyway, um, oh, see, now this painting I have seen in the Met Museum. And as I have not been to the Met Museum this year, I probably could go back, but it's just there's so much complication, you know, so many complications. I can't speak English. But anyway, at least I have this here. Very nice. Okay. Now, here's another name that I can barely pronounce, but um, I sometimes like to read about the Renaissance, another time period, and this is not a very big book, so um, if I, you know, if I like it, then that's great, and if I don't, it's a tiny book. So this is by um, Ross King, author of Michelangelo and the Pope's Ceiling. This is Brunelleschi's, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, Dome, How a Renaissance Genius Reinvented Architecture. So look at this guy, and uh, okay. Ta-da! I, I don't know. I always get a kick out of when they include that kind of thing. I don't know what they call this. But it, because it reminds me of those like V.C. Andrews books, you know, like Flowers in the Attic and all them things. I don't know. So it's kind of funny to see it in a nonfiction book. I don't know. Look at this. Kind of cool. Let's see. When was this book? When was this book written? Da -da -da, I didn't even look at that. It's a little brown the pages, so it feels like it's an older book but I could be totally wrong. Um, 2000. Oh, it's like 20 years, so I guess it's old. All right, now here's a writer that I kind of liked, but I never finished her book about the library. And I want to actually get a copy of it, but I just want to get a discounted copy, so I'm just putting it off and putting it off. Um, and uh, But I've seen good things said about this particular book. Oh, look at this. You always find things in books. Somebody used this as a bookmark. Stretch cotton. <laughs> Was it endlessly versatile? I, I don't know why. Um, why? But, you know, people use things as bookmarks. Anyway, I've, I've seen weirder. Um, so this is the... Uh, 
Orchard. Orchard. I can't speak English today. Orchid Thief by Susan Orlean. A true story of beauty and obsession. So, yeah. So, I have heard this. I think it was Olive at a book, Olive, probably, um, speak about this book. So, it could be good. It could be very good. And it's a dollar, so. I keep saying that like, a, like as if it's not worth it. It's like it's only a dollar. But you know what? It could be one of my favorite books. This is her. This is Susan Or Orlean. Orlean? Orlean? New Orleans, you know? Okay, so I have mentioned before that I like reading poems and books, obviously, novels, whatever, but sometimes I like reading the biographies of poets even more than their poems, or at least just as much. Like, um, I always talk about my favorite poet is Edda St. Vincent Pol Polay. Malay. It'd be nice if I could say her name, but, um, and I do, I, I love her. But her biography by, I think it was by Nancy Milford, I can't remember, um, Savage Beauty, which I read probably in about, again, 2002, uh, was fantastic. So sometimes, yeah, sometimes the um, biography is as good, if not better, than the actual poetry. So I don't know if that's going to be the case in this book. This could be a complete disappointment. But... Um, and I don't know if it's a complete biography because I don't know. I really don't think it is. Uh, but I think it is a partial biography. I don't know enough. But this is this was written in 1989. So this is Coleridge, Early Visions, 1772 to 1804 by Richard Holmes. So, yeah, <laughs> I don't know much about him. I've read a bit about the Romantic Poets. Um, I still also want to read more about Wordsworth and, um, you know, the rest, but I've read about Keats, I've read about Byron, I've read about Shelley, I'm forgetting somebody, sorry, but yeah, I read about that time, and I love it, and I will read more, but I don't know much about this gentleman, and he looks like he's disappointed in me for not having done so, so we'll see. Now... Another, you know, whiplash as I go into another subject altogether. This is a book that I've kind of wanted to get a hold of for a while. And this is the only book that I spent a little more than a dollar for. Um, so, I, yeah, I had gone to the other section. I call it the forbidden section because it is the section where I will always find something I want because it's um, the nonfiction section toward the stairs. They actually moved it used to be another area. So now they moved it into a nice corner that is nice and cozy. And they have all these beautiful history and biographies, mostly biographies that I just, oh, just love almost all of them. And they are not the $1 books. So it's always like, Oh, I want this, but Oh, $20. No. Oh, I want this, but Oh, $5. I'll take it. You know? So it is a kind of a rough, a rough gamble for me, but, um, I haven't been doing enough reading recently about ancient Rome and I did I, I've gone through phases but I always think it's good to get back to it sometimes so it's nice to have a book to get back to I don't think this is the only book I have I know when I get into um, fiction there'll be some historical fiction as well but um this is SPQR a history of ancient Ro Rome by Mary Beard who as of a recent Facebook post, I think. I think I saw that she's still alive. I think it was her that I saw in a um, picture doing some kind of thing and Lucy Worsley was there. I don't know. That's I definitely did not dream that. <laughs> anyway, um, so that's... Uh, I've heard good things about this book. I've heard good things about this writer. I've heard her mentioned, but I have never, to my knowledge, read anything of hers. And so, um, yeah, so this was written in 2015, so not that long ago. And, uh, yeah, I like the way it looks too. It's one of the, it's one of the less discounted books of book off that I've been very interested in getting, you know, and that I have it. Uh, this is, oh, so now I'm down to my last two. I will, let's see, I'll show you this book. These are both $1 books and this one, my sister just finished and it looked like a book that I had read because I've read books on this subject before, but it was written 2011. I couldn't actually see a record of where I, when I would have, like, I keep track of everything I've read and I didn't see it. So I'm like, I guess I 
didn't. So that's fine because I can always read. And if I somehow find out that I was wrong, I just didn't write it down and that, you know, I had read it before. Sometimes it doesn't hurt to read again. So, um, this is, um, this is called Sister Queens by Julia Fox, the noble, tragic lives of Catherine of Aragon and Juana, Queen of Castile. People like to call Mad Queen Juana. I was supposed to get an advanced copy of a book about her a few years back, and I never got it. So, well, I got this one now. I did read a book about her one time, but I, yeah, she was treated pretty badly, and um, in my opinion. And actually, so was Catherine of Aragon. I mean, I, you know, I wouldn't call her my favorite of... The Six Wives of Henry VIII, just because some of the others I just just find more, I don't know, interesting to myself. But she was pretty interesting in her own right. I mean, she was a very young bride. Not super young, but pretty young. Um, supposedly, you know, going to be happily married to um, Prince Arthur, who would have been King Arthur had he lived. And... In England, the new Tudor dynasty, and they really needed to keep that going because it was new and shaky. And she marries him, and very shortly after, um, he dies. So now she's just there, and now the next heir to the throne is Henry, who would be Henry VIII, and she's kind of just stuck in England. And I think, uh, yeah, for a, for a number of years before. Henry the Seventh dies, you know, just trying to keep keep herself, you know, having a living or any kind of life, you know, not really getting enough support and just kind of a limbo. And then finally, um, her father-in-law dies and Henry marries her, which sounds like a wonderful, romantic, happy ending, you know? He, he rescues her, basically, and that would have been probably a very happy story had she been able to keep... A son alive not that not that I blame her at all but you know she just wasn't able to she she had a daughter who outlived her and became a queen later on but um but she had some sons who weren't did not live very long and they really wanted sons to secure the dynasty and sadly that didn't happen so of course Henry started looking elsewhere and, you know, Anne Boleyn showed up and I still think that he might have had mistresses, you know, even, you know, even if Catherine gave him 10 sons, he might have had mistresses and she might have just overlooked it and not thought of anything of it. And Anne Boleyn might have been one of them as well. And he might have even been in love with Anne Boleyn, but he wouldn't have left her. He wouldn't have tried to dump Catherine, if it hadn't been for the fact that she didn't give him a male heir. It's so sad. But anyway, but she fought for her rights and uh, she fought well. But, you know, and I, I think she actually, by age, might have lived longer than the rest of the queens. She might have died first, but you know what I mean, longevity wise. But anyway, so I, I like reading about her and her sister and that time period, let's face it. So that should be good. And last but not least, I like reading Peter Ackroyd. He, I tend to like his books. Um, I have a number of his books I haven't read yet as well. So um, this was $40 when it came out. So, I mean, because Sister Queens was 30 but this was $40 when it came out, and I got it for a dollar. I don't know why. That kind of thing just makes me so happy, even though it's slightly, slightly dented on the top. Peter Ackroyd's Albion. Albion? Um, the Origins of the English Imagination. So this goes with all of my... Not all of, but a lot of my interests. And um, let's see if I can show you any pictures in here. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to take up a million years looking for pictures, but you know. Um, oh, my goodness. We, we got Lord of the Rings in here. <laughs> um, I didn't expect that for some reason. Uh, we have, that's a lot of the medieval stuff. Um, but it's not just, uh, look at this. Gainsborough. Not my favorite, but always kind of fun to look at. Oh, here comes one of my personal favorites. The um, Chatterton by Henry Wallace, modeled by George Meredith, who I basically DNF'd last year, but still um, one of my favorite paintings. And look at this. Um, let's see the picture. And um, I don't know. 
now I'm just now I'm just going on showing you guys all the pictures. But I, it just kind of gives you an idea of some of the things that will be spoken about. And anyway, I like creativity. I like reading about creativity, and you know I like a lot of British books and British uh, art and architecture. Let's face it, I do. So this should be good. But just I will show you what I found in the book because I love when I find things in books. And apparently this person uh, had bad eyesight because they had an appointment uh, on January 28th, 2016 at 2 p.m. with Dr. Kevin Rosen, optometrist in uh, Fort Washington Avenue, New York. I don't know where that is. Sounds like it might be um, uptown. But anyway, because, um, you know, like Washington Heights or whatever. And... Um, and he also wrote this down, so. And maybe he bought this in D.C. because it has a bookmark from Politics and Prose, which I didn't get to go to last time I went to D.C. I went to Kramer's, which was Kramer Books, which was excellent. But, you know, this is another one that I really like to see. Um, so, yeah, okay. <laughs> I'm just going into tangents, but, you know, I like to go into tangents. So I love finding stuff in books. I just do. I mean, not gross things. I have found things that were probably boogers. Ugh, and I don't care for that. But normally I like finding things in books. So that, you know, it doesn't have the name of the person themselves, but at least it has their, uh, well, they must have bad eyesight or at least eyesight. Anyway, so let me know if you guys have read any of these books, if there are any that look good for you for a possible nonfiction November perusal. And yeah, that's it for now. Uh, hope you've enjoyed and the fiction one will be coming soon. I guess. This is Catherine at Taking Tea with Catherine. Have a lovely tea and many, many books. Phil Day. <laughs> Bye.